Hi guys and welcome to my channel Crime Time with Charlotte. Thank you for joining me for my very very first episode. I am super excited to be here and yeah I hope to be in this for the long haul so please like and subscribe to my channel and follow me over on my Instagram Crime Time with Charlotte where I will be posting every Monday a unsolved missing persons case and on a Thursday I'll upload what Thursday's case will be about. It'll also be quite active with things that are going on in the true crime world. So take a look over there and give me a follow. So let's get into today's first case. So my first case I am covering today is Caroline Crouch. Caroline's murder literally took the world media by storm people generally couldn't believe that this young beautiful mother had been killed in her own home in front of her baby girl by armed robbers just heartbreaking so let's find out a little bit about caroline caroline was born on the 12th of july 2001 to her father david and her mother susan so her father was actually from the UK and her mum was Filipino. There's different sources to say where Caroline was actually born either in the UK or Athens but I couldn't find a solid source. However when Caroline was just eight years old the family moved over to the island of El Alanosos which is an island off of Greece and it is a beautiful island. When I was doing my research I just yeah, it was, it's absolutely stunning and I can see why they wanted to move there with a population of, I think they said around 3,000 people at the time. So it's a small island and they wanted somewhere that they could bring their children up and it'd be safe and everyone knows everyone. Caroline was described as being caring, outgoing. She always had a smile on her face. She was always happy to see people, always saying hello. At school, she was described as being popular and it seemed like she really excelled in everything she put her mind to. She loved sports. She had a black belt in kickboxing. She loved swimming. It just seemed like she just she was just loving life. On the island in March, they were celebrating a public holiday. So the island threw a little party and Caroline went and this is where she met Babis. But Caroline was only 15 at the time and Babis was 29. So Babis was an airline pilot. He was a successful one at that. He didn't actually live on the island. His mum lived on the island and he was over there visiting for the holiday. Um, his mum actually was a, well, is a school teacher at Caroline School. So Babis said that the first time that he saw Caroline, it was platonic. He just knew that it was just meant to be. But when he did find out her age, he was disappointed, which, yeah, that is just ridiculous. <laughs> 15 and 29, that is a massive age difference. Not just, you know, the age difference, it's life experience as well. Like, she's still at school and he is a man with a job and paying rent. It's totally different. However, after the holidays, obviously they both parted ways and didn't see each other again until the summer of the same year. So at this point, Caroline was 16. Not that makes much difference, but they did meet again and they spent the whole summer together. They literally fell head over heels in love. They just didn't leave each other's sides. Despite the age difference, people did give their blessing with, you know, Babis's mum being the school teacher. People said that it just, you know, it felt safe because everyone knew her and it was her son. So there was no problems. Their relationship was intense from the start, literally spending the time together. You know, they did make it work because obviously Babis went back to Athens and Caroline stayed on the island but they did make it work and 17 months after being together Babis got down on one knee and proposed to Caroline obviously Caroline said yes she was head over heels for this man they loved each other and despite the age difference they were going to prove to people that 
they could make this relationship work, that they were meant to be. As we know, the Greeks love a good Greek wedding. They've even made movies out of it. My Big Fat Greek Wedding, massive shindig. Everyone invited, but Caroline didn't want that. She just wanted a small, intimate wedding with just her and Babis, which I completely understand. However, because of this, she didn't actually tell her parents that they were gonna get married. She kept it all to herself. And I mean, that must have been so sad and lonely because she literally arranged everything. Baba said that she arranged the venue, the, we the wedding cars, the everything, her dress, makeup. And to keep that a secret, especially from your parents and being, well, she would have been 17 when she was arranging it. It must have just been so lonely and hard for her. Exciting as well. Obviously, she's marrying this man that she loves, but she's got to keep it a secret. So, on the 15th of July, 2019, this is when they got married on the island of Portugal, on the beach. So, remember, 15th of July. <laughs> Caroline's birthday was the 12th of July. So, they literally made, <laughs> waited a matter of days to get married. They were that eager. So, yes, as you can see from her wedding pictures, she looks absolutely amazing and you can see from the pictures from the beach after the wedding like how, how happy do they look they are literally head over heels in love with each other after the wedding they obviously went home and they told the families obviously you can imagine that caroline's mum and her family were upset it's their daughter who has got married behind their back you'd want to be there i'm sure um, however, they did throw a party afterwards to celebrate, but I'm sure it probably wasn't the same. This is when Caroline actually left the island and she moved in with Babis. So they actually chose a house together. They chose an area together. So she didn't actually move in with him. They did choose a house, somewhere to settle together. And soon after they moved in, Caroline fell pregnant. And this really shook Babis, he was not happy. Caroline was over the moon. We saw from one of her diary entries that she said that she wanted a baby. As soon as she got married, she wanted a baby and she's got one, you know, she's pregnant. Babis, like I said, he was not as happy. This is the reason why was because they just got married and their relationship is in such a whirlwind he just wanted time to enjoy married life being together traveling going on holidays settling into the house he wasn't expecting to get pregnant that quickly um however sadly that pregnancy did end in loss and when she miscarried it must have been so hard for her she was by herself you know away from her family her friends and it's a lonely experience anyway, having a miscarriage, let alone being away from everybody and being with a partner that didn't really want the baby in the first place. However, it did affect Babis, who was upset, but it did cause a rift in their relationship. Caroline at this point felt that communication was breaking down and things just weren't the same. So from this, this is when they decided to go into marriage counselling because she just felt like she just wasn't getting the love, the attention that she needed and she wanted and she craved. So this is when they did start speaking to somebody. The following year in June, 2020, Babis and Caroline welcomed to the world their beautiful baby girl. And they were both over the moon, including Babis. It was obviously a year later, I think, probably the counselling and everything just probably helped and once your little baby girl's here anyway it's, it's it's I'm sure yeah happy brilliant as you can see from the pictures on their Instagram it literally looked like they had the perfect life beautiful couple beautiful baby and yeah they just everything just seemed so great and Caroline actually adopted a puppy called Roxy um, as well, which, wow, a baby and a puppy. <laughs> she is one brave woman. But sadly, this picture-perfect family was about to be destroyed. 
when a frantic phone call was made on the 11th of May 2021. A frantic phone call was made by Babis asking for help and someone to come quickly. Police arrived at the property. I don't think they expected to see what they saw. When they arrived, they made their way up to the bedroom and this is where they found Caroline face down, tied up. She had literally been murdered in her own home and next to her was her 11-month-old daughter trying to wake her up, crying. The police said that it was the most distressing scene that they had ever seen and I couldn't, I can't even imagine witnessing something like that even think about it now oh i'm getting all funny but yeah it must have just been so so horrible they did a thorough investigation of the property and they could see that the place had been ransacked babis did say that three armed robbers did enter the property and when they looked downstairs that's when they noticed that the basement window was open so that's obviously where they had entered the property when the police officer was looking around, this is when he noticed that Roxy, the four-month-old puppy, ha had been hanged by her leash from the banister and was dead. The police just could not believe that these armed robbers had killed a young woman and the dog. They just couldn't get their head around it. Like, why? Why? When they got Babis's versions of events, Babis told them that three armed robbers made their way into the bedroom just after midnight. They hailed a gun to Caroline, they tied Babis up and demanded that Caroline told them where she was stashing the money in the house. It wasn't unusual at that time that people in Greece were, you know, stashing money around the house because banks had been so close to bankruptcy so people obviously just didn't trust them with their money so people were keeping it at home so caroline led them to where the money was but barbie said that this is when she got angry she got irritated and remember caroline's a black belt in kickboxing and she decided to fight back and barbie said that this is when she lost her life when she fought back with them Baba said that he passed out when the robbers left and when he woke up he was still tied up and he managed to dial the police using his nose. The police worked out that the armed robbers got away with 15,000 euro. This money was stashed in a monopoly box and it was actually gifted to Caroline. Um, they had found a plot of land and they were going to build their own home and um, so that money was stashed there for that reason. The police made it their absolute priority to find these three armed robbers and because of that they were offering a 300,000 euro reward. That's a massive reward um, because they were just so determined and everyone in the area just felt so unsafe like there had been burglaries around that time but not murder no no murders just burglaries so people were really really shaken by this and only five days after the robbery they arrested somebody someone was trying to leave the country on a false passport so he was arrested and taken into custody straight away he was known to police already. He was known for doing robberies around the area and they interrogated him. And when I say they interrogated him, they interrogated him hard, hard, like beaten. This man was beaten by the police. People, persons did lose their jobs because of this. However, there was no evidence to connect him to the murder of Caroline so he was actually released his DNA obviously was taken so when the DNA results came back you know if he was a match he's your guy in the meantime Babis and Caroline's family were grieving her death Babis was posting a lot on social media in memory of his wife saying how much he missed her how much he loved her 
you could see that he was really upset and he was quite vocal with the press as well. He gave a lot of interviews. He was quite willing to tell his story. He literally just cried in front of the world's media. He wanted to find out who did this to his wife. On the 17th of June, 2021, a memorial was held on the island of Alonosus where Caroline grew up. Literally the whole island turned up for this memorial and you can see from the photos how heart-wrenching this is seeing Babis standing over Caroline's grave holding their baby girl it must have been such a hard hard day for him for the family and for everyone that witnessed this memorial it must have been just so so sad the end of the memorial the police arrived and they went up to Babis and they said we don't want to cause a scene but we need you to come with us because we have a suspect in custody and we need you to identify him people just were like wow the day that Caroline was laid to rest is the day that they potentially have found Caroline's murderer you see a picture of Babis and Caroline's mum embracing each other there must have been such mixed emotions between the both of them you know the memorial potentially finding the murderer it must have just been such a I don't know I just I can't even describe how they felt so the police and Babis boarded a helicopter and they went back to Athens on the mainland where this person was in custody however when they arrived at the police station this is when they told Babis that actually you are our number one suspect you are arrested on suspicion of murder of your wife Caroline Crouch after eight hours of interrogation Babis finally admitted to killing his wife but he said it wasn't premeditated. So how did the police come to the conclusion that Babis was the one that killed Caroline? I mean, he gave a good story. He looks like the perfect grieving husband. What was it that led them to that? So they found no DNA of any foreign source around the house. All the DNA belonged to either Babis, Caroline, daughter and dog no other DNA. Caroline was also wearing a smartwatch which also showed that she was murdered at a different time, Babis said. And also Babis's cell phone records also showed a different timeline of events to what Babis said. This is what the police think happened to Caroline the night of her murder. It's believed that Caroline had finally found the courage to leave Babis. From Caroline's diary entries, we can see that this was no way a picture perfect relationship. Caroline was unhappy. She wanted to leave Babis months before this occasion, but she found out she was pregnant and she didn't want her daughter to grow up without her parents, so she stayed with Babis. From Caroline's diary entries, we can see that Babis was manipulating her, taking her money that she was gifted from her family. He was literally abusing her. And it's so tragic to see what she wrote and how she felt and how she stayed because of her baby girl. We can see from Caroline's phone records that she was searching for an Airbnb that night. It's also shown that she texts her friends to say that her and Babis had been arguing again. Later that night, around, I think it was about 1, 2 o'clock a.m., she went to sleep. And this is when Babis started staging the scene. We know that the CCTV camera SD card was removed around that time, around 1.30, 2 o'clock. From then, Babis went down and arranged the window in the basement to look like a forced entry. He then staged the scene of the robbery, the Monopoly box being everywhere, 
and at roughly 4am in the morning he made his way up to the bedroom and suffocated Caroline with a pillow. We know from her smartwatch it approximately took about five minutes. It showed that she had a heightened heart rate at about five past four and then it stopped. It's later that this is when he killed the puppy and staged that too. He then obviously staged moving his daughter onto the bed and that's when he called the police around 6am that morning. When asked why he killed the dog, why did he feel the need to kill the puppy, Babis said, I killed the dog because people would think that I wasn't capable of that. That's the extremes that he went to to try and cover up the murder of his wife. I mean, and he's saying it's not premeditated. He thought about this. He definitely, definitely thought about this. He said that he staged the robbery because he didn't want his daughter growing up without her parents. I mean, you pretty much made sure of that, didn't you? I mean, well, the things coming out of this guy's mouth is literally so narcissistic and psychopathic. He literally is taking no responsibility. He's thinking about himself and using his daughter as an excuse. If you thought about your daughter, you wouldn't have killed her mother in the first place. I mean, such a stupid thing to say. Babis said that this was not premeditated. His versions of events were Caroline was pushing and shoving him. They had an argument, obviously, about her leaving and the custody of their daughter. Caroline had their daughter in her hands and she threw her in the cot. This angered Babis. He said he snapped and this is when he killed her. He said that Caroline was a bad mother. She was aggressive. She was angry and she could never, ever, ever look after their daughter because she was a bad mother. In April 2020, Babis's court date arrived. He was still claiming it was not premeditated. He snapped because Caroline was a bad mum. Babis arrived at the court in a bulletproof vest, surrounded by police because people were pissed. One, because he killed his wife, the mother of his child, and He's not apologised, he, he's blamed her. And number two, he lied to the nation. He put these crocodile tears on, he made everyone feel sorry for him and he lied, he lied and Babis was facing two charges. One for the murder of Caroline, two for the murder of the dog and giving a false testimony. In court, Babis was still sticking to his story, he didn't budge. He was saying weird things like, if I could go back, I'll choose Caroline again. No, please don't. Please don't. Leave that girl alone. You're tarnishing her name and now you're saying that you'll choose her again. He said that she was such a kind and gentle soul that she didn't deserve this. No, she didn't. She really, really didn't. I think he was trying to make people sympathise with him and feel sorry for him. And obviously it did not work. On the 16th of May, 2022, Babis was found guilty of murder. They didn't buy his story. They believed that yes, he did set out to kill her and he staged everything and he had thought about what he was going to do. He was sentenced to 27 years for the murder of Caroline, an additional 10 years for the murder of Roxy the puppy and was fined 21,000 euros. Babis, of course, appealed his sentence, you know, don't they all? Um, and it was upheld in a court of appeal by a jury. They basically said, nope, get back in there. You did this, serve your time. So uh, Babis is, if he does get out, due to get out when he's in his late 60s. So he potentially still could have a little bit of life left if he is released. And with regards to Caroline's daughter, she is with Caroline's family. 
she was originally with Babas's and obviously they didn't want that quite rightly so I totally totally understand that um, and they have full custody of her and apparently she's doing well and yeah absolutely devastating for that poor little girl honestly absolutely heartbroken for her and their family from this people in Greece you know they started to talk about femicide about domestic violence as we know it always takes something like this to cause a movement and it really did Caroline did story did make an impact on the people in Greece um but yeah such a sad tragic case and yeah she was only 19 at the time of her death so yeah that's that's it for today guys I hope you enjoyed my first video my next one will obviously be next Thursday and yeah thank you so much and well done for making it this far and I shall see you next week Thank you. Bye.